kind of want to see how these games went and stuff. And uh, <laughs> I think the best thing is we have the cast snoop replays in case we have like two hours of downtime. <laughs> because that series is what held up this group, and that's why the winners' match is only just starting. But it's awesome because it means we get to do it right now. To the bottom right hand side, our blue Zerg player from Team Liquid is snoop. And his opponent from the exact same team as the Red Terran player. Give it up for Liquid Thermal. Liquid Thermy. You Thermy. Team Liquid, what do you mean? He's on Team Gateway. Which seems team like a team that really promotes very non balance issue talks. No, is, is it Gateway or is it G Gateway? It's Gateway. It's literally got a picture of a stalker as its emblem. Well, I mean, there are other things that come out of the gateway, Morty. I feel like that's an inaccurate representation I know it means of the gate demographic well, oh my for god. gateways. Oh my god. <laughs> I know, I, I feel Can as we though... not generalize and group everything that comes out of the gateway as just stalkers? You know... <laughs> god, spoken like a Terran player. Always worried about the blink stalkers. You know, I really feel like I try my best with every caster to be somewhat funny and different. I really feel with you, I should just be my good old solo cast and self where I just shut up and only talk <laughs> about the game. I'll just be the I'll just be the chat Twitch troll, but I'm also on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, what's up by the way, Jacko, who just used the Twitch Prime sub at the chat. How you doing, mate? Thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate it. We're kind of back towards 350 subs today, guys, which is awesome. Um I'll get you a balloon right now, but we'll obviously throw it behind us later. As Fear Dragon can talk about our builds for a moment. Yeah, uh, from Euthermal, we already have... <laughs> this this balloon wouldn't stop blowing up! Uh, we do have the reactor coming out for the, the barracks of Euthermal. He's getting out the factory, looking to go for a bit of a Hellion opening. Snood, on the other hand, looking to go for that nice quick third base. Nothing super crazy coming out so far. Uh, only worth, think somewhat worth noting is sort of a preference on how players like to play. You or uh, Snoot actually just likes to take all of his drones off of gas after he starts researching speed. You compare this to people like a laser who we saw in one of the earlier matches. He really likes to just leave one drone on gas and continue mining just a little bit so he can eventually get up some transitionary stuff. But it's all just small little edges and differences that people like to make in these games. Sorry, balloon rain. Oh, Lots no. of links, by the way, for Snoot here, so we'll see what he wants to yeah. do with them. Like, feels as though a lot to kind of maybe run across the map with and grab the first two Hellenes or so, like a little bit off guard, but Ethermal is sticking those on his ramp right now, so he's not going to be caught off guard by something like this. So very nicely mm -hmm. done so far, just being very cautious uh, about this possibility. Reaper sees a few more links coming out. I don't know if that was enough to reveal to him, like that something odd is going on. But he did see the Lings going in a sort of weird direction. It could have just been looking for the uh, the Reaper, but okay, the Hellions did decide to stay at home until 4 popped out, so it's going to be okay anyways, I guess. This, this is enough to at least push things back. Yeah, pushing those Lings back. It's very nicely done here by Euphemal in the end. He's able to uh, get this done. We're going to see the Viking on the way from him as well. He's going to be able to start pushing that up all the way. I don't know if we do start to see the Liberator and then maybe a couple of Cyclones now for that build we saw a little bit of from Hero Marine earlier. Maybe now we get to see it kind of in full swing and actually kind of, you know, how it's meant to be, I suppose, without losing the early Hellions. Because obviously when a la he did it against a laser, a laser shut it down pretty freaking hard. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm really thinking about Sue's decision to make so many lings that early and to be so aggressive with them. I'm actually just wondering, because these guys, they are not only teammates, but Liquid is one of the teams where all the teammates actually really do know and talk with each other and play a lot together. Uh, I wonder if just Euthermal usually sends out his first two Hellions and move... Because there are those Terran players that move out with their first two Hellions. There's the players that move out with four. There's the players that move out with six. And yeah, I think those are most of the situations. So I wonder if he was hoping to catch the first two Hellions. But Euthermal, just this game, kind of mind games going on, decided to pull back with them and stay safer with them because he was going for this Hellbat follow-up. Yeah, I think it's a big part of it, right? Just keep the Hellions alive. I mean, what do you really gain by poking with the first few Hellions? Okay, maybe you can run by into a mineral line, get some kills. That's not guaranteed, but also, it kind of, you know, then you don't have the Hellions for the attack anyway, and if the kind of goal is your attack... Ah, look at this, by the way, uh... Queen in the main already in position to deal with the Liberator. I think that's, like, a perfect example of how you just say... You know, Snoop kind of knows very well uh, 
what is going on. Yep. But knowing and uh, being able to defend against it are two very different things. Ooh, one queen getting so low on health right now. The Cyclone's trying to start a step forward to actually get a kill, but not quite able to secure it. Calabat's pushing on forward. The queen should have enough energy for Transfuse pretty soon, shortly. Yeah, it's going to be one of the big parts of this is actually gets rid of the Hellbats and now the Cyclones will get Ooh. caught as well. But you know what, Snoot? He has not made any more drones. He's kept on making a ton of units right now. And with all of these units, he's going to start rushing up oh. to the top side of the map. And it's a huge counterattack where Euphermal just does not currently have any extra units to defend with. His two Hellbats are not going to do much. He's got two Cyclones on the way. Look how many Roaches and Ravages there are, though, Fear Dragon. There's going to be so much here. I love the idea of a secondary wall already coming through, etc. As he is finally going to be able to start pushing those links back with the Cyclones. But, I mean, a secondary wall for what? The Ravages to bile down very quickly? This feels as though it's going to go very well for Suit as already. Them Debo's taking some hits. Yeah, the Ravager's trying to knock things down, actually getting some good damage done on some of these supply tables. One of the supply tables really just doesn't have that much space either to actually repair. The command center getting exceptionally low on hit points, and there we go. The floodgates have opened, the lings are in, and they do decide to kind of uncommit a little bit. They don't want to get too far ahead of themselves and too far ahead of the Ravagers, but still, even that command center, oh my god, the Orwell command, uh, if it gets hit by some more Ravagers, it's going to have a hard time repairing. I feel like Euphil was doing an exceptional job at just staying alive here. He's micro yeah. this so well, and so, you know, just knowing that he's got tanks eventually on the way. There's currently no Overlord as well from Suit, so he doesn't have high ground vision to just file down this tank, and so Euphermal will begin to push this back, and yes, okay, he's been slowed oh! down heavily. No! Ah, this was the one thing I thought he's done very well as well, being able to keep the oh. this orbital alive. Ah, I feel like losing that now is, um... I, I really felt this was going great for him in like a position he can play from because Snoot has only just retaken the worker lead, you know? But losing an yeah. orbital is obviously huge and that's where maybe is not a position he can really kind of fight from any longer. As we're going to see him coming down here, he's going to try and finally chase those Ravagers away but he's caught up on the ramp and in some vials. That's not pretty. Yeah, Snoot just found you thermal at the absolute perfect moment. I mean, after shutting down the Hellbat drop, and even actually, I guess, as he saw the Hellbat drop coming, I think it may have just been a, it may have been a little bit of mind games and just experience against you, Thermal, that he knew, yeah, you know what? This is the exact time that he's going to do, like, the mech transition. I just, I know you, Thermal, and he's going to throw down the factories, and this is when he's going to be vulnerable right now because he's not going to have enough units to defend. And I think it was, like, a really, really accurate read on that situation. Well, you has got to play out of this position now with Adifert, so you see, and that's what makes this so difficult, to the point where it looks as though he's not even going to bother rebuilding it. He's just going to get ready to go, but you know what Snoot's just done? He's just built a Spire, and it looks like he's just going to mass mutilate it, because <laughs> he probably realizes, like, hey, Euphelmo's going to skip the couple of fours you usually make here, because he's been so worried about dealing with roaches, and so when 13 mutas arrive, guess what's going to kill them? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, there's, there's one Viking and one Marine to try and handle 13 mutas. Wardy, it's been a while since I've been in the unit test map to test like one Viking and one Marine versus 13 mutas, but I think that the mutas may win that. I've got a 99% useless factory right there, Trey Dragon. The mutas do what, win. That's actually a pretty useful fact. It's actually kind of useless because it's like a fact that actually means nothing because everyone knows anyways. You forgot though, there's also some Cyclones that have no impact on this because as soon as he sees the Mutilus, <laughs> he is out of there. Goodbye, Snoot. He's going to take game number one here against you. Well, let's see if he can. Just before we introduce the players, thank you very much. Leave will be W for the free month Twitch Prime sub as well. Thank you so much for all the support, guys. Let's see some love in the chat for everyone subbing, resubbing, and all the rest of it. Thank you very much, and let's do this to the bottom right-hand side. Our Red Zerg player from Team Liquid in this Team Liquid showdown. Up 1-0 is Snoot. And his opponent up here on the top left, we have the blue Terran player. Seen down 0-1, but looking for a comeback. Give it up for Liquid's Euthermal. Sorry. <laughs> I was actually, so I was just tapped out for them there because... I was just checking what our follow account was, and very excited. I'm so happy you're here today, Fear Dragon, because we have just hit 25,000 followers on the channel. Oh my god. Oh my, I literally can't believe it. That's actually pretty that's insane, amazing. though. Yeah, that's, uh, crazy. that's a crazy number of people. That's like almost like, I'd say more or less like a quarter of 100,000. 
Yeah, I was, I was actually thinking about that. Whenever I see 25, because I'm becoming an old man, I always just think, oh yeah, quarter of a century old. You're getting old. And I'm like, oh. oh. Feels oh. bad, man, because I'm like 24, Nelly, and that's Nelly 25. Yep. <laughs> ah! <laughs> um, there is, by the way, a proxy T-Rex that came out, and there is a gas geyser as well. So it seems like it is most likely. Well, there are. It's mostly just marines being made. I guess the gas it's is for just the for the factory. eventual factory. Just yeah. two racks isn't really all in. It's it's pressure. Like if it gets shut down completely, yeah. okay, you're in trouble. But it's <laughs> it's like you will transition out of this with a factory at home. You probably will get a, fa a cyclone across here, and you probably will from there kind of do some bits and pieces as well. Suit starts up his roach roaring immediately as he gets set up into this right now. So. Roach Roaring as he realizes it and we'll begin to look for a defense, but honestly, there'll probably not be a defense which involves save this third hatchery unless he manages to do oh sorry, this natural hatchery, unless he finds manages to do something really crazy in these next few moments. Yeah, this is gonna be work out really, really well for you thermal, at least for the start. Uh Snoot not opting to keep his overlords over by the natural to check around for this kind of stuff. He sends both of his overlords across the map because like you said, it's such a big map. Uh, Thermal really being able to play that to his advantage, and the roaches aren't even going to pop by the time the uh, hatchery comes out, so it is really just about trying to bust out of these bunkers more than anything else. Yeah, it's going to be getting out of the bunkers. I actually kind of interestingly love the fact that Suit takes this uh, hatchery in the background, in the bottom right. Mm -hmm. So throwing this down, and uh, yeah, it's actually really interesting, because obviously it's kind of a way to take the hatch. Even though it's not a great catch, it's still a hatchery, right? So it's something that you wouldn't usually have on other maps. I think this is kind of uh, a bit more of a different scenario than you might usually expect. Let's reduce the yeah. Marines continue to fight their way through this uh, couple of lava here. Killing what he can. I, I also really like that Sue's just being so proactive about spreading the creep and keeping that creep spread there between his main and what will soon be his natural once again after he uh, busts out of here. It makes it a lot easier for the queen to get involved when he decides to bust through those bunkers. And of course the roaches can close the distance a bit faster. We have uh, the starport landing onto a tech lab back at home. The clog banshee is starting to come on up. And we're going to be seeing the reactor onto the factory. Probably just banshee heli and then obviously can't really afford like cyclone banshee at the same time. There's a few corrosive valves coming down, wow. and well, the bunker just getting damaged, but obviously starting to be repaired very quickly afterwards. <laughs> I would have loved if you thermal had let, like gotten to that in base or the uh, the safer natural expansion before it finished. He just landed the barracks, blocking off like two of the mineral, two of the four mineral patches. That would have actually been a really cool move. Actually, I mean that would have been sick, right? But uh, unfortunately, it didn't quite uh, make it there in time as this rack's doing its job of scouting, but. Not really much to scout. He actually leaves the natural before the or the back the pocket expansion, before the uh, lair actually starts up. So he doesn't even get to see the timing on that. So, it's, well, I guess uh, finally Snoop will be able to take the lower ground, the kind of the full base natural, in the next few moments. As you film, only just getting his own CC up. So obviously he's still kind of reliant on the banshees, etc., to maybe do a little bit more here to help him out. Yeah, but all in all, that was. The ideal outcome for Euthermal. He kills off the hatchery. He doesn't lose more than like one marine, and of course he loses his scouting barracks. But that was it. He really, really does a great job of putting the pressure on Snoot, throwing him off into like a, a place that he doesn't necessarily really want to be at this point. And Snoot, he is going for the third, but his uh, his lair is going to be finishing up, and I wonder what his follow up is going to be because he has a lot of gas income and not very much mineral income. Yeah, it's going to be really kind of something for Suit that I think, yeah, like Aspire is yeah. exactly what I was going to say. Something that really isn't, I wasn't going to say Aspire, but I was going to say something that really maybe isn't as usually expected. And Aspire is one of those things. Okay, we just saw in the last game, but that was Suit with kind of a game plan. You really don't expect to see Aspire this early in a TVZ anymore. Like, mirrors are not the way to play. Mm -hmm. So this will oh. be intriguing. With the factory coming, uh, an armory coming down as well. <laughs> hmm. Huh. This could work out really well for Snoot. If, but, if your Thermal's just focused on making going into this mech transition... But does he get the meters in time to protect himself from the, um... Well, like, does he get the meters in time to protect himself from the, like, Hellbat attack here? That's kind of you oh, building hmm. towards. But I guess he's got a few Ravages and Roaches already, but only a few, like, not loads. As these Banshees, by the way, eight workers killed. They very nearly got a Queen as well. They haven't scouted the Spire yet? Oh my god, they haven't seen the Spire yet. That would be a huge scout as well. He's going to go towards the screen. Oh my god, this queen's actually going to lead him to it. 
and go down in the process. This queen was the bane of Snoop right now as he fell against some really important scout and information here. Mm, suddenly things that were looking really, really nice, I think, are not looking as good, but hey, the Spire still finishes up. And some of the Mews aren't... Well, no, the Mews aren't even starting up right now. Snoot, yeah. he's making drones. He doesn't realize that this attack is coming. Yeah, Snoot's in a lot of trouble here. You thermal. He did obviously he did. did enough with that early attack, and, you know, the Banshee follow-up as well puts him into quite the position, and now... Well, again, we said, okay, Snoot has a few units here, and now he does stop at Mews because he's like, okay, well, I guess this may help me survive right now. The reality is it's not going to help him survive kind of further on. There's actually Marines still from the early game as well, and with a couple Cyclones, two meters might not actually be enough here to kind of really push this back at all. Like, even unupgraded Marines can do quite a bit, I think. And Snoot is going to be the one typing out GG. You Thermal takes game two, and we're tied up one of as we now go into game three of you, Thermal Snoop, we're going to kick this off quickly because there is proxy Raxes once again. To the top left-hand side, our red Terran player is Team Liquid's you, Thermal. And the man here down in the bottom right-hand corner of the map as the blue Zerg player. Give it up for Liquid Snoot, who's sending his Woo! Overlord in the right position. He is heading the right way. Oh, no, you cursed it. Oh, he sees the SCV. Oh, he sees the, the SCV. SCV. Wow, that was going to be a Fear Dragon curse there for a moment or two. Nah, I'm just kidding. That's it's not, no. it's not an A no. It's not NA qualifiers, mate. It's okay. You're free. You can't curse things in EU. It's just NA. Oh, man. Drones being pulled off the... God damn it, 40. Drones being pulled off the line to try and intercept some of these units. But he sees that Euthermal is actually not going to be hyper-aggressive with those Marines just yet. So with the Lings popping out, he may just try and take on the, the Marines as they're in low numbers. But no, looks like he's going to play ultra-defensive over here. Yep, yeah, we've mentioned, Ooh, of course, good. that Snoot did go for, like, the pool first here. That's why he has already a queen and a bunch of lings. Yeah, interestingly enough, he's currently not able to fight this. And actually, now, bunkers coming up, and the marines are behind the bunkers, and that is a wall off. So that's uh, obviously getting a little bit okay. interesting here. Well, he forces the cancel on one, and he actually kills the SCV building the other. So maybe you thermal can't get these bunkers up at all. As we do see already, the factory coming up behind this. Snoot will build... Uh, he's already got a spine crawl on the high ground. He's going to start pulling it down to the low ground to be part of this fight. Yeah, and that one SCV still working away at trying to rebuild that bunker. The Queen so far back trying to fight versus all of these Marines. Oh my god, Just the needs bunker. one more hit on that SCV. The bunker. Oh, oh my god, the uh, spine crawler comes up but doesn't target the SCV right away. But it does kill it in the end. So now there's no repair on the bunker and there isn't enough Marines in there to get rid of the spine crawler. But it means that Snoot is still taking damage because there's Marines that are in the bunker that are chasing down drones in this game. Number uh. two is getting hectic. New Thermal's already taken a worker count lead, and Snoot is surprisingly enough actually just droning up now. I guess that sort of makes sense, but I think he's actually underestimating this. New Thermal smells blood in the water. He's still making Marines right now, Wardy. He is still making Marines, as we're going to be seeing only, I mean, only three Lings out, and the spine crawler's down, the Lings count is down, the Queen, there's only one of them in the main, now coming to the low ground. I think Snoot really thought the spine crawler was going to survive this, and obviously that was not the case. So here we are now. Marines are going to move in, and this queen is going to be taking a little bit more damage. Oh, boy. The queen already down to half hit points. Another queen is about to pop out, but more lings going down. The marine count is starting to build up. Once you get up to, like, 10 marines, it's really difficult for a Zerg player to actually ever engage into this. And the, the drone pulls just don't even do anything after a while, but he's got to do this now before it gets too high. He's able to whittle down that worker or that marine count but he's losing a lot of workers in the process another queen goes down and this queen just fighting as the drones pull to the other marine it actually allows him to get enough damage on that queen to pick up a kill you're gonna see a couple of links coming down there and they do get just one more marine pick off and uh, finally suit seems to somewhat stabilize but I mean, New thermal has got Hellions on the way to deal damage to kind of... Well, the thing is, as well, Snoot doesn't have any kind of gas, right? He doesn't have Ling speed yet, so Hellions alone are going to be deadly to deal with. A Hellbat attack's going to be very powerful, and, well, this is going to be oh. a really strong position right now for New thermal. He's rallying two Marines in still to go for more drone kills, and all the Lings walk their way across the map. Of course, Snoot was focusing on rebuilding that economy before he really starts worrying about making more workers. So now four Marines target firing down individual drones while the Hellions make their way across the map. I just don't see how you come back from this kind of damage, Wardy. Two more Hellions arriving now as well, and that's just gonna be the mule coming oh. down. Wow, that wow. was the that was literally this game though, the get out the game button because Snoop's 
They're not waste any time. 